Okay, this topic of computer science is looking at uh, graphs. <clears throat> now, graphs is a data structure um, and type of abstract data type, and it's a mathematical structure that models relationships between different pairs of objects. Now, these objects could be pretty much anything. It could be places, it could be people, websites, it could be numbers, it could be like the physical components, or if we take a, a computer network, how they link together. It could be biological, it could be chemical. It is how each of these different objects relate to each other. So the study of the use of graphs is called graph theory. And it is useful in computing as it allows the programmer to model real life situations that would otherwise be quite abstract. So it falls into this topic of abstraction automation. If you look at an example of a graph then, here is one on the screen. And I've got some key terminology here. So this is a, a graph and this has vertices. Sometimes you might come across these called nodes. So this topic does fall into um, use of maths, A-level maths as well. And sometimes they, they use these terms interchangeably. In computer science, we're going to call these vertices. Now these links between the vertices are known as edges. But again, another term that you may come across is arcs. Now in this particular graph, uh, we're, we're unsure what these represent, but these vertices, we can see that there is a link between them, and this has a weight on it. Now this weight is 4. Imagine if these were cities, that 4 could represent the miles between them. If these were train stations, it could be the minutes it takes to get from one station to another. So we've got vertices, and we've got edges. Two vertices that are connected together are known as neighbours. So if you've got two vertices, they're connected by an edge, then it's said to have a neighbour. C has three neighbours. It has A, B and D. E has two neighbours, D and B. And we've got something called the degree. The degree of a vertex is the number of neighbours that one of the vertices has. So vertex B has a degree of 3 and vertex E has a degree of 2. As I mentioned earlier on there are lots of examples of graphs but here it shows how these vertices and edges could be represented in a few of those different examples such as the internet. The vertices could be the different web pages and the edges could be the hyperlinks. Social networks it could be peoples or actors, and then the friendship links or the films that they've been cast in, and so on. Uh, just take a few moments to have a look through those examples. Okay, I mentioned the term weighted graph. Uh, another term for weighted graph could be a labelled graph. And here is a good example. Each of the edges has a weight. And as mentioned before, that could represent the time, it could represent the distance. There is something between, say, A and B on that edge that has a weight of 1. So whatever our representation of that graph is, most commonly these are used for, say, shortest path, and uh, looking for different ways out of a maze. Um, and so these tend to be distances or time. It could be, say, on a social media graph, it could be the number of years that you've known that person. So if this was Bob, this was Mary, and this was one, it could be that they've been friends with each other for one year. Um, so that's what the weight would mean in those cases. We've got a directed graph. And directed graphs tend to have the edges where it has a direction on it. So actually this, is, this could be used for, um, I don't know, like a tournament of some kind. And we could say that, Team A has beat Team B. Team B has beat Team C. Team C has beaten Team E. E, D, D, B. E has beaten F. It could be in a food chain. A eats B. B eats C. Um, so predators and prey. So with those, weight, with those directed graphs, you might often see that called a digraph. As mentioned, this could be for a round robin tournament um, in terms of what team has won. Undirected graphs 
can be created using the convention of a directed graph and what you actually do is then have it as a multigraph. You have arrows going in two ways. So if you wanted to use directed graph but to represent an undirected edge, we have an arrow going one way but we also have the arrow coming back the other. So it's called a multigraph because there are multiple edges connecting vertices. So they are some of the, the terms for graphs that uh, we need to learn and write the definitions down. These are any terms that could get asked in an exam question. What is meant by vertex? So the vertex are the nodes in this example. These are the, the cities. They are the train stations. Um, they are the particular item that is connected that has a relationship with another item. So the particular object that has that relationship. The neighbors, the degree, the labeled and weighted, which are the same thing. Directed and digraph, which are the same thing. Undirected graph, that's an example of an undirected. Um, it's undirected and weighted. Multigraph, this would be if we were to take the arrow and we were to draw another arrow coming the other way, just like I'm doing here. Um, I hope if that was a different color, there we go. That becomes a multigraph because you've got edges going in both directions. Simple graph, simple graph would be like this with no weights on there. Now, in terms of inside the computer, we would represent graphs in two different ways. Uh, one of the ways is an adjacency matrix, and the other way is an adjacency list. So they both have their merits and they both have their disadvantages and we need to be able to weigh up the differences between them and especially when we're implementing think which is the best to use so in terms of an adjacency matrix there is an undirected simple graph and here is the adjacency matrix for that this can be represented as a two-dimensional array so inside our computer system inside our program uh, we would build a uh, data structure 2d array to represent that graph now all we've got in the graph is this could be a boolean and if there is a an edge connecting two vertices it gets put down as a true or a one and if there isn't an edge it gets put down as a zero or a false so we're building this graph representation up in this case with zeros and ones so we can see here from one it's got a connection to three four and two so there you've got two, three, four. They're the ones. From number two, you've just got a connection to one and four. So two, one, and four, and back the same from there. Two, one, and four. It's undirected, so it's symmetrical. We can put a line right through the middle of these zeros, and it's exactly the same on that side as that side, so we've got a symmetrical representation. So that's an adjacency matrix. Similarly, for a directed graph, we can still use an adjacency matrix, but this will not have like, the symmetrical aspect of it. Um, so looking at this example of a directed graph, if these were different teams, team A beat team B. So looking on the rows, there's a one in there, but nobody has actually beat team A, so there's all zeros in that column. From B, B has got an arrow to C, and you've got a one there, but no other ones. E has got to D and F. So looking along that row, there's D and there's F. So there's no, not symmetrical on this one. And the ones represent where there is an arrow from this team to that team. So row to column. So there's two examples of an adjacency matrix. Now, what we could do is represent as an adjacency list. So an adjacency list specifies the vertices that are adjacent to each of the vertex on the graph. So we've got, say, five vertices there, and these are the adjacent vertices. So one is adjacent to 2, 3, 4, 2 to 1, 4, 3 to 1, 4, 5, and so on. So that tells us five is connected to three and four, three is connected to five. And so this is representing 
the same as this one. So that is the adjacency list. So that is, there's the good example there, we can see the diagram and we can see this. This is an adjacency list for an undirected graph. So its complete comparison is with the adjacency matrix. So there's pros and cons of representing in these ways, and we'll look at these very shortly. Um, but if we look at adjacency list for directed, again, just how this table was ones where there was a direction, then in this adjacency directed list, there are just the vertices where there is an edge between them that's directed. Now going for a weighted graph, these will be slightly different uh, because in some cases we can use zero. There could be no weights, there could be at the minute no friends, there could be no distance, no time to get between it. So zero could be an actual valid weight. So therefore we use the infinity sign where there is not a connection. So with a weighted graph, here is the matrix and here is the adjacency list. Notice the semicolon between each connection. So this is connecting to vertex 2 with a weight of 25. Connecting to vertex 3 with a weight of 0. Connecting to vertex 3 with a weight of 45. And that would work exactly the same with a weighted directed graph. Okay, so which is better? We've got an adjacency matrix and we've got an adjacency list. If there are many pairs that connect together are vertice pairs, so if there are many, many edges between vertice pairs, then the best one to go for is an adjacency matrix. But if you've got lots of vertices with very few edges, then an adjacency matrix is going to waste lots of storage space. So if we imagine um, we've got a graph in terms of this case, and we have a look back at the adjacency matrix, at the moment, all these zeros, there's no connection. So we've got, we've got a good spread there. Let's put on another 10 vertices. So you've got another 10 rows, another 10 columns. And imagine these 10 vertices only have one edge between each of them. So that'd be one edge taken in these rows. You can maybe draw one of these out. But if you've got lots and lots of vertices connected by few edges, then adjacency matrix wastes storage space. Where if you've got many vertexes, many vertex pairs connected by many edges, then the adjacency matrix doesn't waste as much space because there are many edges that exist and therefore a matrix is better. If the graph is sparse, then the adjacency list becomes preferable. Now adjacency lists require more programming. We are required for every single vertex to have a list implemented. Now the list um, is a particular data structure uh, that we could bring into that. So we need a list implementing for every aspect. And that can be a little bit more difficult to implement. It can take up more storage space. We bring in the need for pointers. But if there are few edges connecting many vertices, then a list may be better. So in this case, we've got only two connections or three connections there and the rest are blank. So the question to ask yourself, is the graph dense, many edges, many vertices, then have an adjacency matrix? Or is the graph sparse? There are not many edges for the vertices that are on there. If the graph is sparse, it's an adjacency list. If the graph is dense, it's an adjacency matrix. Okay, that gives an introduction into graphs. This being a topic on computer science, and if we just summarize the key points on the specification that we need to be aware of. Thank you very much for listening.